This video is about the ATP PC system, one of the three energy systems that the body uses. You remember from the ATP video, the role of ATP, that there are three pathways that the body uses in order to restore ATP from ADP. So you remember that ATP is the compound in the muscle that must be used to drive muscular contraction and without it there can be no contraction. But there isn't enough there to sustain contraction for very long, just a few seconds. And so the body has three ways of resynthesizing ATP so that that can then be used again and repeatedly and round and round um, again and again to provide uh, what's needed for muscular contraction. And those three ways are the ATP PC pathway, the lactic acid pathway, and the aerobic pathway. And this video will just concentrate on the first one of those, the ATP PC pathway. So some of the key features of this system are first of all, that it is an anaerobic system. That is, it does not require any oxygen in order to use the ATP PC system to resynthesize ATP. No oxygen is needed. Secondly, the fuel source that is used to resynthesize ATP is creatine phosphate. Now we um, shorten this to PC. Sometimes you'll see it shortened to CP. It depends on where you are in the world. Creatine phosphate or phosphocreatine, uh, either is fine. Uh, I'm gonna continue to refer to it as PC uh, in, the, in the short form. Um, the system lasts between about six and 10 seconds. So it picks up uh, from where the ATP that's already stored in the muscle um, leaves off and continues to produce enough energy for muscular contraction up to around about 10 seconds. In terms of recovery time, after about three minutes of uh, not using this energy system, it's ready to go again. It's basically topped back up. Um, and ready to go again. So that takes about three minutes for the system to recover, um, almost back to 100%. And this system is used in sports that require explosive power. And as we've seen, because the duration is very short, um, six to 10 seconds, any sports that require single bursts or very short bursts of power or speed, this system is the system that's used there because um, it doesn't require oxygen, so you don't have to wait for the system to kick in and get going. So in terms of how it works um, as a whole, the first thing to note is, um, and we'll, we'll take it from this point for all the three systems as we explain them in the next few videos, um, from the point at which ATP requires resynthesizing. If you need to backtrack, go back to the role of the ATP, uh, role of ATP video to backtrack to this point, but we'll pick up from this point where ATP now uh, requires resynthesizing. It's, it's been broken down, the energy's been provided for movement, for uh, muscular contraction, and now we're left with ADP and some phosphates that need to be uh, resynthesized or be put back onto the ADP to resynthesize ATP. The, the substance we use, the substrate that's used is creatine phosphate, or PC, and here's a little diagram very simplified, uh, just to show um, what creatine phosphate uh, sort of looks like. And again, we've got this black line which represents an energy bond. And creatine phosphate is there, present in the muscle cell, ready to be broken down. Creatine phosphate is broken down and the energy that is released, very straightforwardly, is used to resynthesize ATP. So the energy that is released when the creatine phosphate breaks apart, that energy is then used to take a phosphate and reattach it to the ADP molecule to resynthesize ATP. And for every one phosphocreatine, every one PC molecule, every one creatine phosphate molecule, we can provide enough energy to resynthesize or to produce one new ATP molecule. So it's a one for one ratio. One creatine phosphate molecule provides sufficient energy to resynthesize one ATP. 
that's the entirety of the system. That's how the system works. It's very straightforward. Um, and so it has some distinct benefits. The first benefit is, of course, that the, the phosphocreatine, the PC, is already stored in the muscle. So it's there, it's readily available. It doesn't have to be fetched from somewhere else in the body. It doesn't have to be fetched from the liver. It doesn't have to be fetched um, from the lungs or anything like that. It's there stored in the muscle, readily available to be used. Second benefit is that no oxygen is required. Um, so again, the body doesn't have to take the time to, to increase the breathing rate or anything like that to pro provide more oxygen. No oxygen is needed so the system can get going quickly. And which brings me to a third benefit is that because it's such a simple reaction, it's a one for one reaction, breakdown of PC provides the energy, which therefore is used to resynthesize ATP. Energy production can happen really quickly. So it's a really simple reaction. There's not lots of steps in the reaction that, that the, the system has to go through in order to provide that energy. It's really uh, short and sharp. And essentially, um, as far as we're concerned at level three, um, there are no negative byproducts as such. Um, so there's no real, um, no real problem with, with the byproducts of the system. The key disadvantage, however, is similar to the problem with ATP, uh, is that there just isn't that much PC in the muscle. So it can sustain the system for about 10 seconds, um, but, but not much more than that. So it's great, it's ideal for, for speed and for sprinting and for power events like throwing, discus, javelin, that sort of thing. But anything that lasts more than a few seconds, more than about 10 seconds, this system will run out quite rapidly. So that's it for the ATP PC system. Um, I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.